On this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. We talk some OU football by discussing the state of Oklahoma passing name, image, and likeness legislation. And we take a look at some of the early betting lines that were released for OU games. And football guys talking basketball. We discuss why it's important that the Thunder won their tiebreaker this week. And we finish up by giving you our winners and losers of the week. Please download and subscribe to the podcast. Rate it five stars and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right? Oh, man, Michael Hosty will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Thursday, May 27th, and you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience, and your health and safety are Riverwind's number one priorities. There's so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including blackjack, blackjack match, roulette, and craps. No matter what your game, Riverwind has it in spades and hearts. And Fridays in May from 6 p.m. to midnight, you can win your share of $80,000 in cash and bonus play in Riverwind's $80,000 Wildflowers and Winnings promotion. If you need help finding your way, just visit riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the one. Now, Ted, we were recording this a little earlier on Wednesday because Edward, he's got some, he's got some T-ball lined up later, hopefully. League night, baby. Let's Whoa. go. Let's see what's going on. Uh, that is if it doesn't rain for the 30th day in a row. It's so. likely we live in Seattle. I'm tired of it. It's miserable. <laughs> but also, so you, you've you got your son's T-ball no, during when we normally record. And I, I'm not going to lie. I'm extremely excited. I have not seen my brother since January of 2020. Woo. He lives in Chicago. We went to Hawaii together in January of 2020. I haven't seen him since. Year and a half. And he is, he is coming into town this weekend and That's gets here out. today. So I was like, I, let's record before that because I, I'm fired up to see him. He's got a nine-year-old daughter, my niece, I've never met. So, yeah. Okay. So I, it, it's, it's a big weekend. So we've got, we've got that, my brother coming into town, and he's coming in town for my sister-in-law's wedding which is the, all the festivities. We got something Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. So I was like, you know what? Let's get the pod done early. I'll let Teddy scream at some six-year-olds from first base <laughs> and I can get some quality family time in. So it sounds like it's a big weekend for both of us. You need to use this as a trial run. Now a nine-year-old is uh, way easier than a newborn, but this is, this is a trial run for you. You got to start using this as a way to prepare. Yeah, we, you know? uh, my, my nine month old niece is, she's going to test drive some of the stuff for us, make sure it's nice and sturdy. So she's the guinea pig. So yeah. I, I, it'll be fine. It'll That's be good. Fun. It'll be fun. Now, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five star review and a nice comment while you're at it. Okay, let's get to the OU football stuff, Ted. Let's start with this. And I can't believe I'm saying this. We're going to start talking politics. Yes. Politics, Let's get into it. Which, which we, we purposely avoid just because politics makes people crazy. But this is something I think everyone can get on board with. The Oklahoma Senate and Oklahoma House of Representatives, representatives have passed a bill allowing college athletes in the state of Oklahoma to mon monetize their name, image, and likeness. Now it goes to Governor Kevin Stitt where I, I, and I know he, he didn't comment on it on Tuesday, but the, there's no doubt in my mind that will be signed into law. And even if, is that the right way to even say that? Once again, we don't talk politics a lot, but Teddy, we, we've talked a lot about the name, image, and likeness stuff. And with the uncertainty surrounding what the NCA will be able to get done with the help of the federal government, I am a big fan of this. I'm sure it's got its issues, but it's definitely better to have this in place than to not have it in place, right? 
Well, if everyone else is doing it, it really doesn't matter anymore. You have to, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, you got to get on board or it's going to be, be used against you in recruiting and uh, in the transfer portal in a bunch of different ways. So, yeah, uh, you're going to have to get on board because that's where college football, college athletics is going. Um, is there going to be some growing pains? Yes. Is it going to be used to cheat? Without a doubt. Is it going to give big schools yet another advantage over smaller schools? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of things that are going to come with it that are unintended consequences. But at this point, that doesn't really matter anymore. You know, once once someone kicks over that first domino, you're really left with no choice but to get on board or be left behind. Right, and I I think what you said about recruiting is, is the key. Right, because this eliminates any disadvantage for Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in recruiting. It, it can't be used against OU or OSU in any sport. Uh, no other school right now, because recruiting is a 24-7, 365 thing right now. And, and the fact that no other school can say, oh, you're considering OU, you know that they don't let players have endorsements there right now, right? Like that, that can no longer be said with w when it comes to the conversations that big time recruits are having with coaching staffs right now. So I, I'm not sure how long it'll take for there to be a rule that applies to everyone, but recruiting never stops. So it's important that they have this now. And Ted, it is interesting that they are, that Oklahoma is the first state in the Big 12 footprint to pass legislation like this. I, I thought that was really interesting. Look at us on the cutting edge, baby. Yeah, no, it, it is interesting. Um, I, I, and I don't know why that is. Um, you'd think that Texas would be coming pretty soon with all of the Division One schools that they've got, um, and they are typically not not one to be left behind and be out on some of the recruiting stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy that it's moving forward. I think it's, I don't, I don't know. You seem hesitant. Well, I don't I mean, know. I sense I don't, hesitation. I don't know if it's going to be a good thing for college football. Right. I don't, but I understand that you have to do it, but ultimately is it going to be a good thing for college football? I don't know. I, I, and maybe I'm pessimistic, but it seems to me like the perfect way to cheat. I, I just, I think it's the perfect way to legitimately uh, pass money to players through endorsement deals. I, you know, I, like I said, maybe that's just me being pessimistic, but um, I feel like I feel like this is going to leave – it's 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 incredibly difficult for smaller schools that don't have the budget of the bigger schools to compete. They already can't get in on some of the best recruits. This is just going to make it even more difficult to get in on those recruits. Before, a kid may have a really good relationship with a position coach at Kansas State. Right. And this is a, a four star kid and he really likes Kansas State. And there's some good things about the university and he just really gets along well with who would be his position coach. But here's another school that he likes, too. But, you know, they've they've got the ability for bigger endorsement deals and the coaches are using that. You know, you go to Kansas State. Hey, it's a good school, but, you know, they're just not going to be able to get you any endorsement deals here. We can get you lined up with. X, Y, and Z, I just think it's going to be yet again another way for the, the big schools to, to spread out their advantage over the smaller ones. Are we upset then? Because isn't OU one of those big schools with a lot of resources? No, you know? I, hey, I think it's great for OU. I'm with I you. Do. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's a tier thing, really, isn't it? You've got to be able to keep up with the schools in your tier. And Oklahoma's in that top tier that's got six or eight schools in it, and they're all going to be be using this. So we've got to be able to keep pace with those schools. I mean, I listen. I'm under no, uh, 
I know how many teams can compete for a championship. It's no more than 10. The other 120 are doing God knows what, but you know, we Oklahoma have, have to be able to keep up with those other 10. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can't fall behind, right? There, there's already a deficit between the, the way that Alabama recruits and the way that Ohio state recruits and the way that Oklahoma recruits. So uh, this is something in place now that doesn't, doesn't let OU fall even further behind from that standpoint. And there are some interesting details that came out uh, about the law in Oklahoma. Uh, athletes must inform their schools that they've hired agents uh, to seek endorsement deals for them. That seems perfectly reasonable. Uh, they can't use the school logo. One of the interesting things is, though, these, these endorsement deals that they sign can't conflict with the school's contracts. So I think I, you can't I, go get like a shoe deal with Adidas if you're at a Nike school. Right. I, I think it gets, it does get interesting when it comes to like beverages, right? Like, can they, because, you know, OU's a, a lot of Bud Light around there, right? Can they, a lot of Coca Cola, right? Can they endorse some, you know, electrolyte water? or something like that. Like you see the, some of those women on Instagram that are influencers, like the teas and stuff like, does that conflict with it? I, I don't know. I don't know how far that goes. Uh, one of the things, there's no gambling stuff. So you're not going to see Spencer Rattler uh, as the face of FanDuel, which is probably, probably for the best. But I do think that will create some interesting situations, but it also may make it uh, a little better for Oklahoma that they have that in place because that, that uh, eliminates conflicting interests. And maybe that makes it a little more harmonious when it comes to this whole thing is harmonious well, a word Did I just, yeah. that's a word, right? Okay. Yeah. I, cool. whatever you, if you said it and I know what you mean, it's a word. And Perfect. I, it's interesting that, you know, the conflicting uh, endorsement thing is fascinating because I, okay. What about a restaurant? I mean, OU has endorsement deals with a bunch of different restaurants on, on say the radio broadcast, um, a car dealership. OU has deals with car dealerships because, uh, you know, the coaches have their car deals and, and all of that stuff. Um, uh, like where can you even go that OU doesn't have some type of endorsement deal in place? Right. That's where, when I saw that, I was like, huh, that, uh, that could make things interesting. And you're left with toilets. You guys can endorse <laughs> toilets. I'm sure. I'm sure. OU has an official <laughs> toilet sponsor as well. I they mean, do. they got an official sponsor for everything. The, the interesting part about it for me is, who decides what's okay and what's not, right? Is it Joe Castiglione's decision? Is it some board within the athletic department's decision? Like who's making the decisions also? So that there's a guy, there's going to be a guy. It's me and you. I, I surprise. <laughs> we get to pick approved approved. I would just uh, approve stamp everything, right? Rubber stamp the hell out of it. But OU does already have a program they call the Foundry that is going to help athletes with this stuff. You know, I've talked to people in the compliance department about it. They, they have some things in place uh, that they feel good about how they've educated the OU athletes about this stuff. So I, I know it's going to be different. It's going to be it's going to be new. Some people aren't going to like it. Some people are going to love it. But Bottom line is it's good that the state of Oklahoma did this, right? Because starting July 1st, basically all of the SEC is going to allow their guys to do endorsements and there's already a big enough gap. So didn't need to be at any sort of disadvantage. And this allows Oklahoma to Oklahoma and Oklahoma state and Tulsa and all the schools within the state to to not be at what I would perceive as a disadvantage. 
so we've seen states do this so far. Was California the first, or they were maybe one of the first that got headlines anyways? Have we, have we seen any college kid actually get an endorsement yet? Or July are the, 1st. So the, is, the conferences have been holding it up. Is, is that the deal? Like the, It may be legal in your state, but it may not be legal yet in your conference. So from everything I've read, there's a bunch of states that go into effect July 1st. And most notable is probably the state of Florida. And they feel good about doing it because they have had conversations with Mark Emmert there at the NCA, And he has said, I, I think he's made them kind of a handshake deal that those athletes will not be punished for doing what's legal in their state while the NCA tries to work with the federal government to get something in place that works for everyone. So I think July one man is when we're going to start seeing people in the state of Florida players in the state of Florida, you're going to see them in ads on Instagram, stuff like that. And it's going to be really interesting to see what it looks like and to see what the reaction is. It's so weird. I don't, it's going to be weird, but I I'm kind of excited for it. I just, it just doesn't, I don't, it doesn't register with me. It doesn't register as to why it has to go through a state legislator or why it has to go through the federal government. It's not illegal to sign an endorsement deal. Anybody can sign an endorsement deal. Correct. The only reason a college athlete can't because it conflicts with amateurism which is an NCAA thing. That's not a state legislator or a federal government thing. That's an NCAA thing. So I don't even understand why it's, why it has to go through the state legislator anyway. The problem is the NCAA did not address this soon enough and they allowed local legislators to get involved and that thing started snowballing. And before it was too late, Mark Emmer sitting there going, oh my gosh, what have we done? I mean, that's, that's really what happened here. So it, it is what it is, man, but it's here. I, yeah. It, 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 he's like trying to work with the federal government. He doesn't even need to work with the federal government. The NCAA just needs to write in a new bylaw for amateurism that players can sign personal endorsement deals. And then it's done has nothing to do with the federal government. Right. But the, the NCAA is trying to, they're, they're trying to keep that, uh, yeah. that antitrust status with the old federal government. They're like, Hey, Hey, help us out. You know, we're working with you. I, there's a lot of layers to this thing, and I'm not smart enough to explain all of them. But I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad Oklahoma passed that. I was. Hey, I was proud of the old legislators in the state. Way to go, guys. Proud of you guys. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so FanDuel has released some early lines for the biggest games in college football this season, and there are five OU games that you can bet on already. Ted, OU. Opened up as an 18 and a half point favorite against Nebraska on FanDuel. They opened as a 10 and a half point favorite against Texas. They opened as an tw- as a 21 point favorite against Baylor in Waco. I mean, whoo. They opened as an eight point favorite against Iowa State. Reminder, they get the Cyclones of Norman. And OU opened as a 12 and a half point favorite against Oklahoma State. Bedlam is in Stillwater this year. When you look at these five lines, which which ones stand out to you the most? Baylor. 21 points against Baylor is... On the road. On the road. I think their defense is going to be really good. You've got to remember, Baylor's got a really good coaching staff. And they were hammered by coronavirus last year and not I, like I don't know how many players had it and I'm not saying that I'm just saying that Baylor's protocols on campus were brutal we saw it with the football team we saw it with the basketball teams uh it was very difficult for them to get anything done in a first season for a coach that makes it extra hard whenever you're just trying to learn your players names and you know develop some relationships with these guys and they were on zoom pretty much the entire year. So 
I think you could see a, a pretty decent little jump in Baylor, who I thought had a great defense already last year. So I, I think that's going to be a low scoring game, um, which it's hard to cover 21 in, uh, in a low scoring game. So I, that one really sticks out to me. Yeah, I'm with you there. I saw that and I was like, what? And th these numbers differ a little bit depending on what sports book you're looking at. Uh, you, you can find that number uh, a little lower, but yeah, I saw that and I was like, damn, I mean, what that is straight up disrespect for Baylor. And you're right. That defense is going to be good. And it's not just because Dave Aranda is the head coach, but they got good players. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they've got some good players and then offensively, I know Charlie Brewer's gone, but they've got guys at the skill positions, right? You got Thornton, you got Snead, you got Ebner, but I really like the offensive coordinator they they brought in, right? Jeff Grimes coming in from BYU. That was one of my favorite systems to watch in all of college football, and it wasn't because of Zach Wilson. It was because of the system. Uh, I like it. You, you they know run me. the ball a lot, right? Um, and they specialize in what, Teddy? God's play, outside zone. Let's go. There you go. Hey. But that that one is is certainly one I would I would not feel comfortable laying the twenty one. What do you think? I I saw the ten and a half against Texas, and I looked at it and I was like, never ever ever ever. I know it's year one for Sarkeesian. I know they got a quarterback battle. I know they lost a bunch of pieces on defense, right? They lost Osai. Uh, Juwan Mitchell transferred out. They lost Stearns in the back end. Like, I understand it. But I am never laying double digits in OU Texas. There is no way in hell. And it doesn't matter what the record is. Uh, we know we've seen it play out uh, a bunch of different times that no matter what Texas is like, no matter how good their team is that season, the very best version that they're going to put on the field the entire year is going to be in that game. So, and there's not going to be any quit. It's going to be four full quarters. So yeah, anytime it's double digits, nah, I'll stay away from that one. It's, it's going to be a one score game. What do you think about OU being favored 18, by 18 and a half against Nebraska? Listen, I, I understand Nebraska is not a good football team right now, but it's not like Scott Frost has been getting terrible recruits there. There's going to be a lot of emotion and pageantry around that game that can work both ways for those teams. I, it just feels like a really big number against another power five team, right? Like a, a, a solid, like a big 10 team. I know once again, I know since Scott Frost has been there, Hadn't gone great, but 18 and a half is a big number. I'll tell you what, with Nebraska, if if they can find a quarterback, I think not they a could Martinez be good. fan. <laughs> no. Uh I think they could be good. Uh, I've I've watched some of their their film. They are eerily similar offensively to Iowa State. Oh no. Two, Two and three tight ends, uh, shifts, end over, unbalance, motion every snap, uh, do a bunch of things to try and create ways to outgap you and make the defense think, but they don't have they don't have quarterback play. I mean, that's the thing that ties Iowa State together is they do a bunch of things with shifts and motions and window dressing things and trying to get you out of your gap, but after all of that is said and done, they've got a, a capable quarterback, and, and that's been the difference for them. Nebraska does not. So if they can fix some of their quarterback issues, I think they can be pretty solid offensively, and, and you know that's been the problem for them for the most part defensively is they don't get anything done on the offensive side. You know, it's, it's not a bounced football team, so I – I'm comfortable with it unless I see that they've got a quarterback that's all of a sudden, and it doesn't even have to be anything special, smart with the football, capable of making some throws and an adequate runner. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And for our call your shot question, we put all these lines out and, and ask the listeners, 
which games do you feel best about betting on and, and which ones would you stay away from? And at sooner underscore soldier, thank you for your service, sir, says bet on OU Nebraska 100%. Oh, you should win that game by 50 because of the BS that Nebraska tried to pull. Stay away from Texas. Too many unknowns with the new head coach and new starting QB. And it's OU Texas. So throw the records out the window. That's that's a pretty good, pretty good way to sum things up. I I did think it was interesting what our man Sooner Soldier brought up about that Nebraska game. Remember, and I know OU fans won't forget it. And when they show up, and are allowed for that game, uh, I'm sure that this will fuel them. They tried to ditch that game. Unbelievable. I still can't. I still can't believe what happened there. Number one, I can't believe that they did it. Number two, I can't believe that they blatantly lied about trying to do it. Um, and then Scott Frost lied again by saying, oh, I can't really remember how the conversation <laughs> started about it. Oh, you can't remember? how the conversation started about doing something unprecedented in college football and ditching a non-conference game that's been on the schedule for 10 years with the 50th anniversary of uh, the game of the century. Come on, give me a break. Yeah. Both he and the athletic director blatantly lied. Just straight up calling them liars, Ted. Well, I, hey. I know that, hey, you call it how you see it. That's the type of guy you are. Uh, our man, Big Al OU 28 says not touching those Baylor or Texas lines with the 10 foot pole agreed. He also says Baylor is in Waco with a whale of a defense and weird things happen in the cotton bowl. As for Nebraska pump that number up. <laughs> uh, our band, Steve Bullard on Twitter says never, ever, ever bet on the Texas game. <laughs> and then our friends well, it sounds over like at, we've got a lot of people that have learned this lesson before. Yeah, right. I, I feel like th- some people have uh, learned from the, from some betting mistakes they've made in the past. Our, our friends over at OU Barstool uh, chimed in and says, mining, mining, or minus 18 and a half over Nebraska seems safe. The Iowa State line scares me. What do you think of that one? Eight point favorite against Iowa State. I, I feel good about it because it's in Norman, but by the time that game rolls around, that number, yeah, I mean, you may want to hold off because if Iowa State is as good as a lot of people think they're going to be, including you and me, that number could drop a little bit, right? Yeah. We could be looking at a, you know, six and a half, five and a half situation by the time, what is it, November 20th rolls around? Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Um, I, that game, so whenever you look at last year, they beat us up there in Ames and they had a chance to throw it into the end zone for a win at the end of the big 12 championship game. And there's some things that happened in that big 12 championship game that, um, you know, we kind of got lucky with, you know, there were some plays that they, uh, they had a chance to make and things that we messed up. Um, but I don't know. So the way I look at it is I think last year, it was, it was about a wash. I think we had two equal teams. Um, so the question is, have we gotten better and have they gotten better? I would say without a doubt, Iowa State is going to be a better football team next year because they have all of their players coming back and they're all good players, except for Jaquan Bailey. They've got, they've got everyone else coming back. Um, can we... I, so I would say like today, I think Iowa State may be a better football team. But by the time that game rolls around, is our offensive line playing more like we're accustomed to? Um, have we found some more stars at the skill position spots? Feel pretty good about our defense. Um, but if it's a big game, if it's a top 10 matchup in Norman, I love Oklahoma in that game. That's that's the thing about OU is we rarely get to host a huge game like that. And when we do, we typically show up in a big way. So if it's a top 10 matchup, I like Oklahoma. If Iowa state has dropped a game somewhere and maybe it's not looked at as big of a deal, then I think it's becomes a little bit different scenario, but I like Oklahoma 
strictly based on the fact that it's at home. That's going to be the bigger the game, whenever we're at home, the better we are. Yeah. The question becomes, do you like them eight points worth? Right. So it'll be, I would say yes. If, if it's that, if, if the team develops like we think, cause I, we have a higher ceiling than Iowa state does, but I think today Iowa state may be a better team today, like right now, because of all the experience that they have, we've got right. some youth that's going to be coming in at some spots that I think has a chance by the end, by the end of November to really build. And then from a betting perspective, I, I do think, I, I think Iowa state's could be damn good this year. Uh, I think you and I are all, all aboard the Matt Campbell train. And that that's why I wouldn't bet this game one way or the other right now, because uh, I think that those two football teams are going to be closer than people realize. And that, that number, that eight will, will come down and you'll be able to get some more value. Now, if you, if you think Iowa state is really, really good, I guess you could, you know, you know, take the eight right now and say, Hey, no, I, I feel great about it. And uh, that's probably a good way of going about it. If, if you like Iowa state in that game, but if you're thinking if you about take Iowa Oklahoma, state and eight against Oklahoma in recent years, that's a pretty good bet. Agreed. Agreed. Um, We're not telling you what to do with your money. And, <laughs> and a reminder, always be responsible. That's right. You're betting. Okay, Ted, let's talk money. First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank also provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. First Fidelity Bank donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank at First Fidelity Bank. Visit FFB.com for more information. And don't forget to send your kids to Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School has a long tradition of educational excellence. They know that children need to be in school and are doing everything possible to make that happen. Bishop McGinnis students were welcomed back last August and saw very few interruptions in 2020. With a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio, no student is overlooked. Bishop McGinnis's college prep curriculum offers 22 AP courses. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Financial aid is available. Okay, football guys talking basketball. FGTB and Teddy, this is not our strong suit. <laughs> we are we are going to we're going to relay some math to people here. Uh, there are a lot of numbers coming at you here. So, oh, and shout out to Joe Masato at the Oklahoman for breaking it all down in, into language that uh, I could summarize and and understand. Okay, the Oklahoma City Thunder won their tiebreaker coin flip this week against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So. The Thunder have the number four overall slot for the draft lottery. If you take anything away from this, people, that is a good thing. It's good. Just know it's good. But here are the numbers to show you why it was important that they won that tiebreaker. So it's a little weird, but the Thunder still has an 11.5% chance of getting the number one overall pick and has a 45.1% chance of getting a top four draft pick. The Cavs, who they won the tiebreaker over, actually have the exact same odds when it comes to the first pick and a top four pick. But where, the, where winning the tiebreaker is important is at pick five. The Thunder now has a 7.4 chance of getting pick five, while the Cavs only have a 2% chance. So the Thunder has a 52.5% chance of having a top five pick, while the Cavs have a 47.1% chance of having a top five pick. So that means the Thunder have a 5.4% chance better. I don't know if I just put that right, but they've got a little over 5% chance more, more better than the Cavs of getting a top five pick 
Teddy, you'll always take a 5.4% chance advantage. I'm not always. a math wizard, clearly, but I'm taking 5.4%. 5, 5. Can't even say 5.4, apparently, but I'm taking it every chance I get. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, especially all you got to do is win a coin toss to get it, you know? Uh, sure. It's... It's a decent little advantage. I just got to think that this is all so incredibly difficult to understand for, for the common fan. I think it's why a lot of people check out of the NBA draft. There's so many moving parts and weird, uh, you know, picks or draft picks that are protected or unprotected or it's just a really weird system the nfl draft is very easy to un to understand very easy to talk about you know the layout the format of the draft for an entire year leading up well not i guess not an entire year but uh five months or four or five months leading into it it's just it's so convoluted that I think it really takes away from the whole thing for the it's fans. too hard yeah it's too hard it doesn't make any there's, sense there's too much math there's too many percentages like my head hurts from just reading all that do you have any idea how much effort it took for me to read Joe Masato's thing and understand it and then try to relay it I mean the the NFL simple hey if you finish here here's your draft order the NBA, I know they're trying to make the regular season more interesting, so they flatten the odds uh, at the bottom of the lottery. They're trying to, you know, discourage tanking and all these things, but it's it's just too hard to understand. And then you've got the pick swaps, and then you've got the trades that happened years ago, and you're like, wait, they have that pick, but oh wait, if that pick is better than that pick, then they have those two picks. It's it's exhausting. And don't even get me started on the NBA salary cap. That's that's impossible. There's a reason these people make a ton of money is because they make it so hard for a normal person to understand. You have to have a degree from MIT or Harvard or Yale or some nerd school to even understand it. Yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know. I, I guess I can't hammer the system until I can offer a better solution. Um, True. But it seems pretty straightforward. If you're worst, you're first, and then it falls into order after that. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. Um, and I, shouldn't they get rid of the protected pick trade? Like, if that, you want to trade, put it out there, buddy. If not, hang on to it. That would be that would be awfully nice for the Thunder this year. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. so so that that is another aspect of this whole tiebreaker thing so the pick swap with the rockets is uh, i mean the chances aren't great but it's still in play so the rockets have the best odds to get the number one pick and the best odds to get a top four pick they finish with the worst record in the league however it is possible that the rockets pick falls to five and if it falls to five the thunder get that pick so if, if the Rockets get a top four pick, then the Rockets keep it. So if the Rockets do get a top four pick, if that happens, then the Thunder will get the Miami Heat's pick, which is pick 18. So yeah, it's nice and simple. It's not confusing at all. So let me ask you this. Let's say the Rockets get a top four pick and they get to keep it. Where... Where does the piece of that trade go to? Does it go to like you get the next year's unprotected or how does that work? So as far as I understand, and I'm just focused on this one draft today, right. I'm just trying to understand what, what's happening in the present. The Thunder end up with the two best picks of their pick, Houston's pick, and Miami's pick. So – if the Rockets get a top four pick, then they get to keep it, right? Because then the swap doesn't go through. So the Thunder will have two really good picks, but in a perfect world, as far as I understand it, 
the Thunder would win the lottery, right? They would get that pick. So they would get the number one. The ping pong balls would bounce their way. They would get the number one overall pick. And then the Rockets ping pong ball doesn't come up till five. In that scenario, the Thunder would have the first overall pick and the fifth overall pick. Right. And when you look at this draft, a lot of people see it as a five player draft, right? And I think the, you know, the first player is probably Cade Cunningham. And then you've got Mobley from USC. You've got Suggs, who I liked a lot from Gonzaga. And then you've got the two G League kids, Green and Kuminga. I, if they got one and five, like we, we're celebrating. I mean, we're throwing oh, yeah. a party. Yes. But the worst case scenario would be uh, the Rockets pick is in the top four. So the Thunder don't get it. The swap doesn't go through. And the worst pick the Thunder can get with their odds is eight. So it, the worst case scenario. So the best case scenario is Thunder get picks one and five. The worst case scenario is the Thunder would have pick eight and pick 18. That's trash. Yes. Facts. And, and that is, that's amazing that like that trade, like the difference in value. Um, imagine that, like whenever you look back on a trade, if you say we got the number one and the number five pick out of that, that's awesome. If you look back and say, we got the eight and the 18, that's horrible. Like the difference in value between those two scenarios is immense. Wow. And it all comes down to the bounce of the ping pong balls. Gambling. Whew. 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 That's going to be exciting, gambler, baby. Though. God, I hope they get the number one overall pick. I, I just want, I want the Rockets to be punished for getting rid of James Harden. Now, Harden did it, but I really hope they get the fifth pick, of course, because I want the Thunder to get that. But they don't deserve it. No. I may be a little biased, though. Okay, Ted, let's get to our winners and losers of the week. But first, do you own a business? If you do, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective, comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Insurica's clients become best-in-class businesses by working with Insurica's team of advisors to manage risk. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business. Best-in-class businesses win by avoiding a loss in the first place. If your business partners with Insurica, you'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk. I'm an Insurica client, and you should be too. If your business wants to be best in class, connect with Insurica at Insurica.com. That's I-N-S-U-R-I-C-A.com. And make sure you connect with our friends at Advanced Weight Loss Clinic of Sand Springs. They'll help you execute a realistic and achievable weight loss plan designed for you and only you. They've got all kinds of treatments for men and women. Their licensed and trained experts combine diet and exercise with hormone therapies to maximize your results. If you're struggling with low libido or low energy, Advanced Weight Loss Clinic of Sand Springs can help with that too. They also offer Botox and fillers. To get on the path to losing weight, call 918-241-LOSE or visit their Facebook page. If you mention the podcast, you will get a free fat burner injection. As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Well, the first thing we got to do is let's talk about what a winner is. A winner okay. is a person that... Um, will put the team above themselves. Uh, a winner is a person that uh, above all else, above money, above fame, above statistics, that person wants to win football games, wants to pursue a championship. And Julio Jones wants a trade. He wants out of Atlanta and the Patriots, baby, that's a, that's one of his locations. He wants to be a winner, gay biker. That's what Julio Jones wants. He wants to go to a place where you can win championships. I think this is fantastic. I hope it happens. Be a perfect fit for him. Uh, he's trying to go win some football games. He's got an um, uh, enormous amount of stats. Everyone knows how good he is. Pro Bowls, everything. The man 
wants to go win. And he, two of the places that I've heard, New England and Tennessee, two really good uh, organizations. I hope he goes to either one of those. Two organizations that happen to have some serious Patriots roots, obviously yes. Patriots, but then you got Vrabel. You are, you're certainly letting your Patriots flag fly here. Okay. First of all, do you think he had to have known he was live on the air, right? Do you think he knew that? I mean, cause that call was shade of sharp. Like that was, it was weird. He straight up on the phone said he wanted out of there on national TV. Yeah. I think he knew. You think it was it was coordinated, right? They, they, yeah. Some people are like, "Oh, that's messed up." Shannon Sharp didn't tell him they were on air. He's got to tell him sooner. There's no way that had to have. I, I don't believe in coincidences like that. At least that had there's to have no been way. coordinated. There's there's no way it was not coordinated. One hundred percent, it was. Sure, but the man wants to be a winner. I love it. Let's go. New England. Hopefully he wants to embrace the, uh, the Patriot way as well. I think it's well documented at this point that uh, maybe it's, maybe it's not the most fun place to play, but you're right. They do win a lot. It's not a fun for last place year. to play for losers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, your love for the Patriots. It, it, you would think that you played there for 10 years or something. The way uh, you love that organization. It's ridiculous. Well, who knows? Who knows what would have happened? Would uh, you rather have Tannehill or Mac Jones if you're Julio? It's got to be Tannehill, right? Mac Jones hadn't done anything in the league, but he—he I, he is. A lot of people comped him to Matt Ryan, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, are we convinced that Mac Jones is going to be the guy? Well, unless Cam Newton, like, unless his arm regenerates and he can throw the ball farther than 25 yards. Yeah. I mean, maybe he won't be the starter right away, but you got to assume that they're going to want to get a, they're, they're going to want to have a quarterback on the field that can throw the football. If Mac Jones wears the 50, the red 50 Jersey that he was practicing in, then yes, I, I say he should go to new England with Mac Jones. It was such an ugly picture. <laughs> it was awesome. I don't okay. know. I, I, I think that, um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Tennessee's uh, other wide receiver. AJ Brown. Yeah, and uh, you got Jonu Smith, the tight end, who really had a nice year. Nope, he's a Patriot now. A Patriot now? Even yeah. better. There Remember, we go. he got signed a free agency. That's Isn't right. that right? Uh, that may be right, yeah. Um, I like both. I think they're both a really good fit for him. I do. He wouldn't have to be the only guy because of the great running game in Tennessee. Um, I, I do think that New England's offense has a ways to go. Like they've they've got to figure some things out, and quarterback play will obviously be a key there. But wherever Julio Jones goes, we know he's going to make an impact. Yeah, when healthy, still an absolute monster. Okay, who do you have as your loser of the week? Well, whenever it came out, it sounds like a good thing for Deshaun Watson that the earliest he could be deposed over this um, civil case that he's got going right now is February of 2022. That sounds like a good thing. And I know there's still some teams interested uh, in, in trading for him, but I mean, most likely I think that if he's going to be playing football this year, it's going to be for Houston. And that is a death sentence because that team has nobody left, even though, Last year they were down and he had he had one of the greatest seasons that you could ever imagine as a quarterback and they won what four games I think he uh, either led or was number two in the NFL in passing had like only three interceptions rushed for a couple twos so he had a great year last year but man he is going back to a team that has nobody left and they are going to be terrible. That is going to be a brutal I mean that's that's going to be brutal for Deshaun Watson clearly with that I mean when he's got that lumen over him I, I wonder how well he's going to even be able to play right mental focus is so important at the quarterback position and yikes and then it 
it is going to be a zoo for that man every road game. The signs, what people are going to say to him, the chance. Oh, no. it it's going to be ugly, man. I mean, it ugly. Is. I have. I don't feel bad for him. I know, once again, right. let the process play out. You know, innocent until well, proven guilty. But, ooh, that's going to be. Ooh. I'll tell you what's. And I haven't. I haven't followed along really closely, but it sounds like a lot of the case or some of the stuff has fallen apart for the. Um, I guess the plaintiff in this still, because, you know, there's rumors out there that they've tried to settle multiple times and Deshaun Watson has said that he wants the settlement amount made public. And the other attorney, I think Busby for the, um, for the, for the other side has like said some things and then denied them and walked them back. And they're in discovery right now. And I don't know and a lot of it is always posturing, but just by reading some of the stuff on it, you're, it's starting to feel like Deshaun Watson's side feels like they have the upper hand in this deal. And, um, they're going to, they're going to run it out as long as they can and try and try and get this thing going. And they want to call people out. There's already been, I think a couple of people back out of the, the case uh, on the other side. So I don't know. It, it's fascinating, but yeah, it's going to be a rough year with that hanging over your head, playing on a terrible football team where you don't want to be, where he said verbally that he does not want to be there. That makes for a miserable year. Monitoring Twitter during Texans games is going to be, Oof. Oh, Oh, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> okay. Guys, spring is here, and you know what that means. It is hard seltzer season, baby. And there's only one hard seltzer that we drink on this podcast, and that is Will and Wiley Hard Seltzer from Coop Ale Works. It's perfect for any occasion. We drink it by the pool, at the lake, and at the tailgate. It's made in Oklahoma, and it is absolutely delicious. Will and Wiley is customized for the Oklahoma lifestyle. Go find it right now in your store near you, and go follow them on social media at at Will and Wiley if you're drinking some because of us. Tag them, let them know. Okay, Ted, for my winner of the week, thought about going with the PGA Tour because they are trying, desperately trying, to figure out what life after Tiger Woods is going to be like. And Brooks Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau hating each other just might be the new best thing in golf. That that video is incredible. It's one of the best videos I've ever seen, ever. It's so good that I've even questioned whether or not it's like legitimate or if they're like playing this up for everyone. You know what I'm saying? It's like, he is so animated rolling his eyes. At, oh man. It's just... the disdain is so real. It's ju- juicy. The DeShambo video, some guy like he drives the ball and some guys like that away, Brooksy. And he's like, Hey, whoever's calling me Brooks, he needs to get out of here. <laughs> I love that these guys hate each other. I will say this. I, it, it has turned into an all-time meme. I mean, the look on Kepka's face, it's, it's one of the most memeable things ever. It's fantastic. This is good for golf. Yeah. It's something that intrigues people. I know next time they're playing in a tournament, like I want them to be in the final group together every single time oh, because yeah. I know they hate each other and that's, that is good for golf and golf needs some of these storylines. They need some of these things like this. And I think, I think it's amazing. It's incredible. Uh, Did you see the Barkley and Shaq one? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) there's so many. If you haven't seen the memes, go find them. That's great. They're amazing. I, I also thought about going with pizza hut because they have partnered with OU softball to create Home Run Village. Home Run Village. It. It'll be there for the Super Regional in Norman uh, when they take on Washington this weekend. It's going to be free with a big jumbotron to watch the game. There's going to be music. There's going to be food. Sounds awesome, right? Pizza. Watch some it softball. Does. Because yeah, wear a hard out, hat right? back there. Yeah, you better keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> that's right. That, I think it is kill awesome. someone. Yeah, that's that's um. 
that's really cool. There's gonna, I'm, I imagine there's going to be a lot of people out there. As long as the weather stays uh, decent, I, I think that's a great idea. It's kind of like what the Thunder did at their playoff games back in the day. Um, Thunder Alley be cool. yep. before there were someone decided to fire a gun during it. Right. Ruined an awesome thing. That's why What's we wrong? can't have good things, people. What's wrong with people? So I, I, I assume that Home Run Village is going to be a hell of a time. But my winner of the week, OU basketball, because Trey Young and Blake Griffin are balling in the NBA playoffs. Now we're recording this before game two of the Hawks and Knicks series, but Trey Young was fantastic in game one, had 32 points including that game-winning floater, got to shush Madison Square Garden. Now, his technique on the shush, you know, it, it, it was what it was. I know some people were giving him a hard time for the shushing technique, but that was a big-time performance. I mean, he, he played so well, and the Knicks fans ended up hating him so much. They were, they were chanting F.U. Trey Young the entire game. And Knicks fans were so salty about it. And even New York City's mayor talked trash about Trey Young the love day it. after that game. I mean, he he is in, he's in Knicks fans' head. I love it. I'm sure his game two performance will be impressive, but I, I'm also really happy for Blake Griffin. He's out there dunking on fools again. He was giving us some left-hand finishes over people in game two against the Celtics. And that, se that series is over but when you look at Blake like everyone thought he was washed he's become a keen player for the Nets and I know the Nets are the villain of the NBA and it's it, you feel gross cheering for him but I, I just can't cheer against Blake especially he's become one of their best defenders I mean he is playing clutch minutes for them he's playing at a high level he's extremely efficient passing the basketball he's just turned into I mean he's not the star player he once was, but he just, he's a really pivotal player for that team. Uh, I know a lot of people look at it and it's Durant and Kyrie and Harden, and that may be true, but old Blake Griffin's back, man. It, it, it's fun to watch him succeed after having some tough luck the last couple of seasons, Ted. Yeah. It, it, it is unfortunate. It's for the Nets though. I get it. It's you know just what's like, weird? Ugh. And I don't know, I can't control this. It's just how it happens. Like I, there's either something in me that despises a team or there's not. And for whatever reason, I don't, I kind of like the Nets. I'm I don't know you. why. I, you want, you want to know why? Because they're incredible at basketball. <laughs> they share the ball. They move the shot making with Kyrie Harden, Harden's ability to create, his ability to pass. I mean, Kevin Durant, one of the the most skilled seven footer we've ever seen. Like, it's fun. It's if, fun to watch. And if you if you take away the feelings about Durant and about Harden, and you take away the sadness of the Harden trade and what that meant for the franchise, and you take away what he did, uh, forcing his way out of Houston. If you take away Kyrie being a complete weirdo. If you strip all of that away and you're just looking at the product when it comes to basketball, they're the best team to watch. It's incredible to watch. Their skill level, their ability, I mean, it's amazing. It, it's beautiful to watch. You don't I think, have to like it, but. I think who, my anger with Kevin Durant stayed in Golden State whenever he left. I mean, the the – the reason he left or the, the reason for the anger whenever he left Oklahoma city was for where he went. And during that time, it was like, he went to their biggest rival. I mean, say what you want. Like at that time, those two teams were, were battling it out. That's why that was so uh, painful. And that's why uh, Thunder fans were so angry. I mean, there, there's a bunch of reasons, I guess, but, Number For one me, reason, because he ruined our 4th of July. That's the number one reason. <laughs> right. I was in California. I was drunk at 9 a.m. True story. <laughs> Just started drinking vodka at like 8.30 in the morning. Was drunk by now. I was, I was not in a good place. When in doubt, just pour another one, I guess. But I, 
I, whenever he, he left Golden State, to me, it's kind of like a new start. And I, for whatever reason, I've, I've enjoyed watching that team. You're incredibly talented, like you said. Um, whenever Blake Griffin joined the mix, that was just that was just more for it. So I'm down. Uh, I hope they win the whole thing. People are going to judge you for saying that, but I kind of hope they do too. They're well, who else am I supposed to cheer for? I mean, that's a good point. But are we supposed to cheer for the Mavs? Like, ugh. we'll get eh, to that. Maybe, I'm definitely but cheered. definitely, I will not. I refuse to cheer for the Lakers. Oh yeah, no, absolutely not. Okay, for my loser of the week, thought about going with Cleveland Indians pitcher Zach Plezak. I think I'm saying that right. Maybe it's Plezak, Plezak. I don't know. I'm not gonna pretend that I I knew who this guy was before I read this, but. He fractured his thumb, uh, had a rough start, had a rough outing, and he fractured his thumb when he was, quote, rather aggressively ripping off his shirt and got it caught on a chair at his locker. Ted, we love dumb injuries. This one's up there. I, I, I wonder, was it like he's ripping it off over the head? Was he ripping it like Hulk Hogan style? Like what kind of shirt ripping are we talking here that led to the uh, thumb fracture? I, I'm not buying it. I think it was a poorly placed punch somehow. Ooh, punch the wall. Something, something. I broke the thumb though. Maybe he he went thumb on the outside of the fist. Like an idiot, or like whenever your kid first learns to punch and they tuck their thumb underwards don't under the. I don't know. I don't know, but I cannot imagine a scenario in which ripping a shirt off breaks your thumb. I guess I could be wrong, but it's baseball guys, man. Over and over and over, it's these ridiculous injuries. I don't. It's amazing. I don't know. It is. It truly Very is. Very fragile players. <laughs> it truly is amazing. Uh, I also thought about going with people that don't like Guy Fieri. You see mm. you see how I fancied that up? That Fieri. was good. Uh, if well. those people exist, I don't know. It, there's people out there that don't like to go to Flavortown. I know that, right? I, he's not for everyone. But if you don't like Guy Fieri, uh, this, this week was not your week because our man Guy Fieri signed a three-year $80 million contract extension with Food Network. And mm. I'm here to tell you, Ted, that guy deserves every penny because there is there are few things better on planet Earth than getting drunk early on a Saturday and being in bed by about 8, 8.30 and watching a triple D marathon. That is, oh, the dream. I. I, I'm going to need someone to somehow convince me otherwise that we don't live in the uh, greatest country in the history of the world where a fat guy with frosted tips and his hair, spiked hair, can get paid $80 million to go around and eat food. That's really it. That's it. Do what you love. The guy loves to eat food. It shows, I mean, there's nothing groundbreaking going on. It's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Who would have thought of putting salt and pepper in their chili on a hot dog? This is the best hot dog I've ever had. It's, hey, give credit to the guy. It's entertaining. People are watching it. The ratings have to be good. Food Network's making money off of it. He gets his piece of the pie and gets to do something that everyone loves. And here's the thing, man. Like he makes more than a bunch of athletes that requires a ton of work and a ton of skill. And, you know, it's a grind on your body. There's pain. It's a year round thing. He's shooting a season. He probably stays at a great hotel, fry, flies in private three days, hanging out, eating food at diners. That's amazing. He, he truly is living my dream. Now, once again, he, Seems like he's a pretty, I don't know if accomplished is the right word, but uh, respected chef. Like he, he clearly put a ton of time into this, you know, built up the clout, built his reputation and has the charisma and all those things. But you mentioned 
him, you know, kind of comparing to other athletes when it comes to compensation. I saw this from a couple of different people. Guy Fieri would be the 15th highest paid player in the National Football League with this contract. He'd be making more than Tom Brady. He, or he is making more than Tom Brady. It's amazing to show it? up. It's the lowest pressure job you could ever have. It's not like there's a whole lot of production put into what they do. You just show up, have some good energy, be fun, eat some good food, throw around a couple of chef terms, and that's it. Fantastic. God bless this country. God bless America. Right. But my loser of the week, and I'm going to keep milking this because watching them lose is so, so satisfying for me, Ted. The Los Angeles Clippers. Kawhi had 30 points in the first half. He ends up with 41. Paul George didn't shoot it well, especially from three, but had 28. And they lost. They were outdueled by Luka Doncic. No shame in that. But they got that work from Tim Hardaway Jr., who was shooting the lights out. And the Clippers are now in an 0-2 hole against the Mavs. They lost both games on their home floor and simply have no answer for Luka Doncic. And I don't know if anyone does, but you just hate to see it, Ted, after, after they lost their last two games on purpose to get this matchup uh, so they could avoid the Lakers, so that they could ruin the Thunder's lottery odds. And, well, it's, just, it's, it's such a shame that they're, they're not hopefully not going to get out of the first round. I just – I stayed up. This game finished late. It finished after midnight. I stayed up instead of getting sleep to watch them lose because it makes me feel so good. I, well, I think I might have a problem. Um, it, I'll tell you something that's fascinating. You know, there's some serious sports curses going on or have gone on in the past, but playoff P needs to take a, um, a page out of the Ted Lasso book and bring in a couple of personal items and burn them because he needs to ditch that curse. Since he made that statement in Oklahoma city, he has been terrible in the playoffs. So I don't know. It, it's, they have, they have not, uh, not been able to, to capitalize very much on their, their talent advantage. And I'm with you. Uh, Hey, I don't, really care for the Dallas Mavs, but in this situation, let's go. I'm all yeah. in. Well, Luca's he, he's spectacular. He They're is pretty boring to watch though. The way that they play. I mean, it's basically give the ball to Luca high pick and roll, let him do his thing, get the switch. Then now he's a great passer and all that stuff. Like he's, he's a magician. There's no doubt, but they're boring to watch, but I hope, I hope they sweep them. I really do. And just a reminder, Kawhi Leonard, I believe, will be a free agent this summer. And just a reminder, the Thunder have all of their draft picks because of the Paul George trade. And it looks like they just might end up with absolutely nothing to show for it. And that brings me great joy. It does. <laughs> I if that may uh, maybe that's not how I'm supposed to approach things, Ted, but I I take joy in their suffering. I do. I'm with you. I'm with nice. you. I'm not convinced that Kawhi Leonard is going to continue playing basketball. He may just be like, ah, I'm good. I'm done with it. Just, huh? That, that was fun while it lasted. I'm going to go chill. <laughs> 41. He was, he was great in that He's first amazing. half, but just not enough. Let's go Babs. And on that note, episode 116 in the books, we'll have a new podcast that will drop Monday morning. Just a reminder, you can hear Teddy from 2 to 6 on Sports Talk 1400. You can hear me on SiriusXM, Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. Hope you all have a great weekend. And everybody, please remember, do not blow your hands off. Make smart decisions Memorial Day weekend. We don't need any listener deaths. <laughs> don't do anything totally stupid. Be responsible, please. We love you all. Stay safe over Memorial Day weekend. Until next time, we appreciate you all for listening. Do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.